just bought yourself a vintage radio and you want to power it up which is natural and it's what everyone wants to do but if you plug it in and the capacitors in the power supply have had any time to dry out and let's face it your radio is probably 50, 60, 70, 80 years old they will have uh, there's a really good chance that something could go bang and if it does there's a really good chance that that thing is made from unobtainium so how do we avoid that? well if you've seen any of my videos you've probably seen this little beastie which is my dim bulb tester and it generally carries a 60 or 75 watt bulb it's running a 75 watt bulb at the moment and all it is is allowing the mains that's coming into the radio to pass through this bulb because at maximum brightness this bulb will allow 75 watts to, to flow and we can do some maths and work out what the current is but it basically keeps the current pretty low it puts a cap on it so when you run a crook radio through this it's effectively the radio ends up acting like a short circuit and all the mains throws, well, flows through the bulb and you end up lighting up a bright bulb. If you see that, you know there's a problem, you shut it off. In the meantime, because this was in circuit using um, all the voltage, the radio is somewhat protected. So uh, if you've seen it before, you power up a radio, you get a wee flare of light and then it uh, dims back down until the heaters start getting to the point where the valves are flowing current and then you'll see it glow up a little bit and stay there as the radio is drawing a steady current. That generally means that nothing is in terrible distress. It doesn't tell you that the radio is okay but it can give you a chance to test it and see if it's working. Uh, which is really handy if you want to know things like output transformers and things if they're okay. Uh, it also gives you a baseline you know before you start working on it that yes it was making sound but it was humming badly or whatever the state is right, troubleshooting beyond that is the next step but this is an important piece of safety kit for the radio not for you for the radio right so how do you make one well this one's made in an old ATX power supply case um, out of a computer it was just one I had lying around um, screwed a bit of wood to the back screwed a uh, bulb into the base and then wired it up via um, a switch that allows me to remove the bulb from the circuit by going direct um, and also a switched socket which means I can just turn it on and off. That's really handy um, it was what I had lying around and I just chose to build it in there but you don't really need anything that fancy at the end of the day, it's an extension cord and a bulb socket, and you're done. Right, you probably want to screw this to a wee piece of plywood or something so you can't get your fingers in the back and give yourself an ouchie, but really, that's all there is to it. So what I'm going to do now is actually quickly throw one together, and I haven't practiced this, um, I haven't made sure that this is actually going to be a sensible way to do it but it certainly seems to me like it will be All right. um, these batten holders are pretty simple it's a bulb socket with the connections on the back and we'll have to work out which one's which uh, but those two prongs are where the voltage goes through so we can trace those two prongs back to probably these two um, in fact almost certainly these two so all we're going to do is cut the brown wire in here and feed it through here we can cut the other two and there are actually loop points here um, doesn't say on there it says something but I can't read it earth right so earth can be looped there neutral can be looped there so we could just cut the wire in half And for not very much money at all, in fact realistically I think this extension cord cost uh, four or five dollars, 
the baton holder was about the same, maybe a bit more. So for $10 or $15, you're going to have yourself uh, a means to safely check your radio. Now, your radio is going to plug into this end. You probably want the bulb not too far from that. Uh, which will give you plenty of cord at the other end to run it away to plug it in. This does not deal with other safety aspects such as um, live chassis sets. It doesn't isolate in any way at all. And um, certainly here in New Zealand where the mains is 200 and, woof, 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 230 volts, I do not like live chassis sets. I don't think there's any need for them. Uh, they were really just budget sets. The dogs have decided to bark. Because the camera's on. And what else would you do? Um, okay, so for simplicity... Let's try that again without the barking. So, piece of plywood, just an off cut from a thing I had. Bulb's going to sit about there. Cord, we've got plenty of cords, so I might have a wee bit more coming out. And there should be breakout points in here. So we can run the cord in one side and out the other. Now that's not going to put any strain relief on it. I'll probably put a, a couple of zip ties around it just to protect it. So you may choose to carefully peel this insulation back um, and just cut the phase. But in the interest of making this really simple, that's why my little cutters don't last so long because they get used for everything. Um, now, this bit really important when you're dealing with mains voltages. Score lightly with a sharp blade and then bend it back to break through. And be really careful. If you need to go more, just light pressure and rock over the top until I see it start to break through. If you get the, warp, the insulation of the individual conductors and you cut it, cut the whole thing off and start again. The insulation's there for a reason. And if you cut it, you're compromising your safety. And you're dealing with dangerous enough voltages in these radios as it is without making things even more dangerous. Spend a little bit of time Do it safely All right. Now with normal flex you're going to find there's a talcum powder or some kind of powder inside the insulation that helps you slide this off. And this stuff, they probably don't bother. There's a wee bit in there, but they generally wouldn't think they'd bother because they're not expecting anyone to strip this back. So it may be just that little bit harder to get off. Right. And the best part about making one of these is that once you've got it, you can buy as many vintage radios as you like and know that you have a way to safely power them up and test them. Now one of the worst things is, the uh, things that I really, really hate is when I've bought a radio and I go to pick it up and the person says, 
oh, it's a really good runner. You want to hear it going? And I always say no, because I actually don't care. Um, because it will go when I'm done with it, even if it doesn't. But um, I just don't like the idea of running them up. without some kind of safety device in them because the power supply caps in them are probably old even if they have been replaced it's likely the last time it got a service was from a guy who was actually a radio serviceman back in the 60s or 70s and so everything really probably needs doing anyway okay so in New Zealand and Australia don't know about the rest of the world. Well, I have a vague understanding of the rest of the world, but I don't live there, so I don't care. Green is Earth, or green with a yellow trace is Earth. Brown is phase. Brown, it's the dirty one. It's the one that'll get you. That's the phase. That's the one we're going to run through the bulb. And blue is neutral. All right. So in this particular instance, we're going to loop these together, and we're going to loop these together because we're not interrupting the earth, definitely not, and we're not interrupting neutral. What we are interrupting is the phase, the incoming phase. That's what's going through the bulb, so through those two connectors. So, if you have wire strippers, use them, obviously. Um, I do. <laughs> no, I think I do. Where are my wire strippers? This is why messy benches are a bad thing. Alright, so if you have wire strippers, use them because they will get the insulation off without damaging uh, any more of the insulation. Obviously this insulation stretched a wee bit. Just make sure we've got enough. Right. If you don't have wire strippers, um, then you can just carefully crimp around, and you're not trying to cut through at this point. All you're doing is scoring the insulation, and then without squeezing too tightly pull it off. Check for any conductors that it got cut off. If you cut conductors then normally I would say cut it off, do it again. Uh, in this case radios aren't going to draw a lot of current. In fact we could probably do some maths. Um, 75 watts P equals IV so 75 equals what we want to know times 230. So uh, transpose that and we get 75 divided by 230 uh, equals well, how many 75s? 150, about a third. So about 300 milliamps, does that sound right? Approximately. These are designed to take 10 amps, so if you lose a conductor, up to you. Right? Um, it's your safety, it's your personal safety you're dealing with and those around you, so you've got to decide what's okay. But the training I had was if you nick or cut even one of these conductors, this is designed to carry the load with the safety margin. Every wire you take out reduces the safety margin and reduces the current capacity of this wire. So in fault conditions, do you want it to be able to handle what it says it can handle? Yes you do. So be really careful not to con uh, nick those conductors. Right, I'm going to do the rest with the wire strippers just to get it done, but I just thought I'd show you that in case you don't have wire strippers. Right, this is an every everyday tool that an everyday person should be able to make with parts they can get from their local hardware store. Um, 
So as I said, green's going to green. So earth to earth. I feel like I'm getting some kind of weird eulogy. Right, now actually I can just see earth marked on this one. It's not going to matter. Now, I was always taught, and again, this is just advice from what I remember, you twist them together, fold them over, and then the folded over piece goes against the screw so that it takes the brunt of the shearing and tearing action that the screw will do when you screw it in. Just stopping to think. No, it's alright, don't panic. Um, those of you that have put sockets or plugs together before and then forgotten to put the back shell on, um, that, that was a thought going through my mind, but no, that goes in from under there. doggies are in fine form. If it's not the guy in the helicopter, it's the doggies. Still, I'd rather it was doggies than helicopter. Right, you don't want to over tighten these, you don't want to under tighten them. I remember asking my instructor way back in the day, I vividly remember actually asking him how tight do you do it up, and he said tight enough. That is completely useless, but I guess it's just a feel thing. Right, so... When you fold these back, fold it back to no further back than the insulation, maybe just a little bit short of the insulation, and make sure that the insulation sits below the level, so you're protecting everything, um, below the level of this, but not so that the insulation is actually being screwed in. That's not ideal. Right? You don't want to screw into the insulation, you want to screw into the copper. And as I keep pointing out, um, I am not a professional. I just know what I know because I've been taught many years ago. My knowledge may well be out of date. So you're dealing with mains voltages. Be safe. If you're not sure, don't do it. Get someone else to do it for you. Um, I imagine you could probably pay a sparky a couple of beers or a packet of chocolate biscuits or something and get them to put this together for you. And that might not be a bad idea. Right, that's all in there. So I'm going to break out opposite sides here. screw that down like that and we're done. First of all I am going to put some zip ties on that just to stop those from coming out. Now, these zip ties are probably not going to be big enough to do what I need to do so I'll do a couple
Gotham ready. It is what it is. As long as you don't yank on it. socket in place. Put that on there to hide the mass. Screw that on with some screws, which I don't have. do a much better job than this. And I suspect the screw might be a bit too long as well, so it's possibly just blown out the other side, which is not ideal for whatever's under the bench. Like I bought one. All right. And so, because we care about safety, we're going to do a couple of simple checks first. All right. Neutral. It's a neutral. We're good. Earth to earth. We're good. And phase to phase, we should have nothing. But phase to that pin, we're good. The other pin, we should have nothing. And then the phase pin on the plug to the other plunger, we should have connection. And to this plunger, nothing. Beautiful. Do some simple safety sanity checks. There should be nothing between any of these pins on either side. Good. All right. Those checks complete. And at this point. Steal my bulb. Right. Must be an incandescent bulb. Nothing else, no CFLs, no LEDs. Incandescent bulb for this. Right. And what we'll do is use it to test a radio which I've just been working on. And in fact, did a video, or started to do a video on. Lost power. Well, lost power to the camera. And because of my setup on the bench here, it all got way too hard and I had to get this done. So you won't get to see it, unfortunately. But it's a Philco 401. Um, nothing flash. I've got to repair the speaker. But it's all been recapped underneath. So Get rid of the light off the situation and see if it does what it says on the box. Alright, so radio plugs in there. Saw it glare, didn't realise it was on. See it's dimmed right away again. 
the radio is working because the dial light's going and you'll see this filament just start to flare up a little bit more as the radio starts to conduct. There it is, it's just starting to come up now, which means the heaters are doing their job and the um, valves are starting to pass current. Now, you won't hear much unless I give it some aerial. And there you have it. One dim bulb tester working exactly as it should. If the bulb lights up brightly, really brightly at any point, you know there's a problem. It should never get too much brighter than this. Of course it depends on valve count. More valves equals more current. Um, and you may need to go for a commensurately larger wattage bulb. Um, but I find that a 75 watt bulb works for four, five, six valve sets quite happily. Okay, so there it is, your first piece of really useful vintage radio test equipment and a glimpse into my life with dogs. Alright, thanks for watching.